Hi, my name is Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, or ear, nose, and throat doctor here in Los Angeles. And I wanted today to talk about the adenoids. What are they and what kind of problems might they cause? Adenoids are made up of lymphatic tissue. It's part of the body's immune system and it lives in the back of the nose. When somebody comes into the office, it's not an area that we can easily see. It's not as simple as opening your mouth and looking at the tonsils. The adenoids, they're about this far back in the middle of the nose. So you either need a little camera or a scope to look that far, or you need to shoot an x-ray from the side. If the adenoids were enlarged or inflamed, they can cause a few different types of problems. From an infection standpoint, adenoids or adenoiditis can give you a stuffy, snotty, drippy nose. It can give you post-nasal drip. Basically, on the outside, you're not going to be able to distinguish it from a sinus infection or a bad head cold. When the adenoids are enlarged but not inflamed, it gives you a stuffy nose, which can give you kind of a muffled voice. It can give you uh, physical limitations as far as how fast and how far you can run because you can't really breathe a full breath easily through the nose. And if the nose is stuffy enough, it can also force you to drop your mouth open and be a mouth breather. If you're chronically mouth open, it can lead to dry mouth and cavities, but it can also alter the shape of your jaws as you grow. So in small children, it can have a dramatic impact on facial development. And not only will you need braces and orthodontics later, you're much more likely to need jaw splints, jaw expanders, and potentially orthognathic surgery as well. Little kids are going to get a lot of stuffy noses because their immune system is more immature but sometimes it's caused or significantly impacted by adenoids. In children who get a lot of snotty, stuffy, drippy noses again and again and again, it may be worth evaluating the adenoids. If the adenoids are a big part of the problem, then in children under six years old, taking out the adenoids can make a dramatic difference 90% of the time. Over six years old, it's about a 50% chance of a dramatic improvement. Once you get older, adenoids disappear. So sometime between puberty and the early 20s, they shrivel, shrink, and disappear. So if you continue to have a lot of stuffy, snotty, sinus type issues after that, it's almost never the adenoids. Other things that may contribute to the sinonasal symptoms that I've been talking about are certainly allergies, environmental sensitivities, potentially some sort of immune deficiency, and external environmental exposure, so chemicals, pollution, dust, smoke, at the end of the day, the adenoids may be part of the problem, or sometimes the entire problem. If you're having these issues, it may be worth evaluating. Enlarged adenoids causing blockage or stuffy nose and mouth open breathing can also sometimes cause significant sleep disturbance. So not just simple snoring where it's noisy where you're breathing in and out, but overt sleep apnea where you're having gasping and choking and pauses in your sleep where your sleep is chopped up, your sleep quality is terrible, and when you wake up you're exhausted. In kids, this can mean poor school performance, it can mean a little hyperactivity and, and attention deficit issues. Uh, it can also mean somebody who's outgrown bedwetting who regresses again. Adenoids can cause problems with ears as well. Because it sits right where the ear and the nose connect in that little tunnel where you need to pop and clear your ears to maintain and equalize pressure, the adenoids can sometimes block the plumbing and lead to chronically plugged up ears with fluid that won't clear muffled hearing, but can also lead to recurrent ear infections where the ear gets inflamed again and again and again. That's not to say that every kid with ear problems has an adenoid issue, but it might be connected. Taking out the adenoids, if it comes to that, is a straightforward procedure. Because of the location in the middle of your head, it takes about five minutes to do, but requires general anesthesia. The adenoids have consistency of firm tofu or kind of a meatball, and it's not a difficult thing to take out. There are many different techniques in how to do it, and that's based on surgeon preference, but at the end of the day, it's usually no more than a five, maybe a 10 minute procedure with a couple of drops of blood loss, and that's it. If the only thing that you do in surgery is an adenoidectomy, then usually the pain afterwards is quite mild. Most people get through it with three or four days of Tylenol or Motrin. Most people don't miss any school or work. You do also have roughly one week of a stuffy, snotty, drippy nose. Feels a little bit like a head cold in the recovery period. You're not actually sick, but you're going to be a little bit run down. 
The most dramatic thing people notice after an adenoidectomy is a horrific bad breath. It's just the way that that area heals. It always goes away, but takes about a week. The bad breath can be very dramatic. So certainly if you're going in for a smoochy little kiss, you're gonna notice, but sometimes even opening the bedroom door, you get a big waft. Taking out the adenoids is astronomically less of a deal than taking out the tonsils. Because the tonsils sit in the back of the throat, taking them out can be a very tough recovery with a two or three week time span to get completely back to normal. For adenoids, it's kind of a long weekend of taking it easy, and that's about it. Almost always when somebody's getting their tonsils out, the adenoids come out as well. We almost never do a tonsillectomy alone. It's frequently an adenotonsillectomy or a tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy at the same time. The flip side though, if you're doing an adenoidectomy, you may or may not do a tonsillectomy because the tonsils escalate the pain in the recovery. I hope this was helpful in giving you an idea of what the adenoids are, where they are, and what they do. If you think you might have adenoid issues, definitely then see an ear, nose, and throat doctor and get evaluated. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below.